The Fizz banned away well, by Origin this time around. No real surprise there. Yeah. First ban straight towards Copper Shot in that top lane. Question is, do you want to ban a jungler then for Origin, as you talked about, Trevor? And then maybe first pick one for Amazing, try and put him in a favorable situation? No, instead. Another topic we just talked about was these AD carries. Um, Severe. Yasuo ban. So Yasuo is an interesting one. Maybe they know something from Squims that we do not. Yeah, clearly. Because this has confused both of us. But this is again one of the things you can do against Gambit because there are less of the top picks you have to always ban away that we, that we normally see. With the likes of Kalista out of the picture, you can start going for target bans and you can, I mean, very clearly go for a, uh, I guess more a predicted pick from them. Shen also banned away. So three, I would assume this is going to be three top lane bans versus Kappa Shot. Maybe the Yasuo is going to be flexed also for bits in the mid lane. But Arjun very heavily focusing straight towards Kappa Shot. So Gambit have one ban remaining. Kalista is still up and available. Jungler is still up and available. And the support will be the final ban. So Mithy's not going to get his hands on Morgana. Morgana just suffered its fifth loss of the summer split. What do Origin prioritize as their first So, pick? two things here. First of all, Rek'Sai Greg is open. When both of them are open, you can go for a Kalista pick if you want to, but you don't really have to against Gambit unless Forgiven is now playing it. Uh, at the same time, you also have to worry about the fact that Gambit has flex-picked the Gragas to top lane. They have gone Gragas Rek'Sai first rotation. But I honestly feel like Alistar could be a pick up here for Origin. Just because if Gambit just want to run the Rek'Sai jungle or Gragas jungle, and they're not going to take away the Kalista anyway. You will get a tier 1 jungler, you will get Kalista as an AD carry, and you also lock in what many consider the best support available at the moment. We should assume Eddie wants to pick it if it goes through here. So Arjun has a lot of things they need to uh, think about here. And also, do we want to take the chance of giving Gambit their the flex pick? Or if they lock this one in, I mean, then I guess we are talking this, the same things as uh, Origin are right now. So what did Gambit reply? You've looked at the Alistair. They now need to lock in two picks for themselves. We've not seen Forgiven on Kalista, but we have seen him play champions he's never played before. Yes. The Sivir the Corky. He is a player we expect could learn champion. Has he? We're about to find yeah. out. That, <laughs> impossible to predict. No, That's obviously what Origin is saying is, we don't expect you to play that champion, so we don't worry Calling about it. Bluff. Um, question is again, Gambit, do they want to take the two tier one junglers, put Kappa Shot on a Gragas top lane? It's not really a surprise anymore because we have seen it a few times. Seems not. And this is something they did last week as well. Very heavy focus on poke and ignoring what is considered the power picks in the current meta. Nidalee jungle, Corky AD carry is something we have seen more and more. And I think that's a fine pick for Forgiven. The problem is still, Nils is going to get that Kalista. So you're not going to 2v2 lane it. You're going to have to swap away from it. And then suddenly you don't get that lane dominance that Gambit likes to use. They've only been in lanes of once, entire EU LCS. And they fell really far behind in that game. Yeah, Origin, on the other hand, five lane swaps out of their respective eight games. So we'll see if Origin want to look for that again. The last time Diamond did play the Nidalee, and the reason I'm fairly critical of it, despite the game being a win, is Nidalee ended up 0, 2, and 3. So we need to see whether or not he can help out the solo okay. laners to help carry again. That was one of the games, though, where Diamond didn't need to gank. He was putting all his attention on warding early on. We highlight the stat, how many wards he places, I think it's the most for, for, for junglers. Highest on average yeah. per average game. So that was his focus. It wasn't ganking. He didn't need to because his lanes were winning on its own. So we can't really blame him for not getting any kills because he put a lot of pressure on the map. You're not 100% expecting Gambit's lanes to win as easily against Origin. Not against the Kalista, not against, or with the Rex side jungle as well to apply the pressure. It can very quickly snowball for Origin. Obviously the Alistar, not the strongest laner, so Gambit can go for a Bard. They've done, the, done it before, the double uh, ranged. And then take that 2v2 lane. Try and battle it out with, with Origin. Not expecting a Mordecai. No, not at the moment. So let's see if Gosu will be running that Bard. He's run Thresh and Bard twice, and a couple Tarek. of mixed others. He actually ran the Tarek into Kalista last time yeah. around. And if my memory serves, that game was a win as well. Against SK Zero, Gaming. 4 and 10. You can't hop away from Dazzle. That is true. This is Gosu Pepper's counter to the Kalista. It also sets up a very easy Q for Forgiven in that lane. So it's like stun into the Kalista, bomb coming in from, from, uh, from Forgiven, and you have a strong start to the trade. 
I want to see if Gamma then, I mean, to me, it, it tells me they want to go for standard lanes. I want to see Kapucha then on seven, some sort of carry. Seven out of eight games in standard lanes. Gamma definitely want to go standard. But one thing they're also showing is almost a disregard for the current theoretical Completely. meta streak. Completely. And they're doing it over and over and over again. We'll see if it works out. They're currently three and five versus Origin, who are six and two. Two picks left to lock in. We've seen Peke really favoring Vladimir in the mid lane. Four games out of his last eight, and that is locked in once more. So again, for him, he just wants something where he can try and go even in the laning phase. Because for Gambit right here, it's so much about that laning phase. You have to be able to get a lead early on. Otherwise, it's going to be so hard for you to play it out. Ari is a champion that is fantastic if she does get a kill early on and if she can start snowballing. But again, she's a champion relying on vision control so you can catch people with charms. If you start falling behind, it's too predictable what you want to do, when you want to jump in, how you engage straight on Origin. There's going to be an Alistar, there's going to be a Lulu that's not going to be possible targets or are going to try and stop you from doing anything. So Gambit really is going to rely so much on that early game. Hec I wonder, available. Yeah, Hecarim is open for, for Kapo Shard. Have seen it a few times. Can be fairly tricky though into a ranged matchup. Echo, Echo is also open if you place it in the top lane. So five seconds left. We're waiting for a Kabashar champion. We assume Fizz, Yasuo, and Shin were okay. targeted towards him. And Kabo's gonna stick with his most played. Two games on that Hecarim. One win, one loss. Eight, two, and six is overall stats. Gonna have the poke of Nidalee and Corky to play with. And the CC of Ari and Tarek to try and focus what is effectively a two-threat comp here from Origin. And we talk so much about how Gambit wants these standard lanes because they want to try and use the Tarek. They want to see if they can get the Trinity Force rush on Kappa Shot. Origin is free to just lane swap. In this case here, Lulu requires a lot less gold to be effective compared to a Hecarim. Kappa Shot also tends to not be running the Smite because he wants more early pressure in the game. You see, Which I know you like. A lot more of that. I, I like it. I prefer it right now. After all the nerfs to send the Hulk, I really like the fact you can rush the Trinity Force and have that mid-game impact. But Origin can lane swap here and try and dodge around the, the laning phase a little bit from Gambit's side. Depends on just how, how they want to play it again, yeah. I mean, we, we had the Alistar locked down. That was pretty, pretty fun to talk about, yeah. but at the same time, it showed the lack of Kalista from the side of uh, and Gambit. After all the discussion about junglers, despite there being no focus on the bands, Gambit again show their priority that Gragas to them is maybe more of a top laner. Kavishaw's run it a couple of times this split. Disregarding Rek'Sai entirely, which in my opinion, Diamond's had his most impressive game of the split. So here's your team comps on screen one more time. Let's see who's going to get the advantage and who's going to get ahead. Of course, for Origin, we've seen what Pekka can do late. We've seen what this Vladimir can do late. Assuming Gambit give them time, Pekka will be able to carry. But until yeah. then, it's going to be on Niels. There's a lot more things for, for Origins to do in the late game compared to, to Gambit. It's about that early game. We keep mentioning how important it is. But this Nidalee as well for, for Diamond, it's because they like to play Corky. And they like to mix them together. And just have that long-range poke once you come out of the laning phase. But it's, it's always risky when you give away so many strong picks. You give so many comfort picks over to the other side. It means... The way Gambit looks at the game clearly is we don't care who we're playing against. We trust in our own picks at the moment. We know how we want to play them and we feel like we have certain counters ready for these OP picks like the Tarek into Kalista. It worked once for Eddie. I want to see if it works again. Well, we'll find out if Lightning can strike the same location twice. Scientifically, I believe it can. Uh, we do have a very brief pause. There's a mouse issue on stage which we're busy looking into. But we've got some fantastic numbers that you know, Spelzy and the guys off here have been digging up for us. And to uh, Fisher, you've mentioned it already. Gambit have played standard lanes in seven out of the last eight games. They average a gold lead at 10 minutes. They average a gold lead at 20 minutes. Arguably, it's small, 350 and 720. But then when Gambit are in a lane swap, they're down two and a half thousand gold at 10 minutes. That one game, yeah. And 4,000 gold at 20. I know I'm being a little overly harsh, it's one game. But Origin have lane swapped in five of their games. Now, we don't know, uh, we can't really explain exactly who initiated and why the lane swap occurred. But 
Origin, are better in those scenarios, and we'll see if they want to try look for it. Yeah, them. they play it more, and yeah. it fits more their style. Again, it's not about the first 10 minutes of the game for Origin. That's where they just sit and farm up. They wait until there's an opening to start roaming around. Use Mithy. He's on the Alistar. Fantastic roaming abilities for him. Join in with the Rek'Sai, and if you suddenly start moving in towards the mid lane, you can set up dives really effectively, go towards the top lane if Lulu can push in the Hecarim as well, and suddenly you have openings for Origin. So if they do decide to swap to that top lane, and you take down that tower, you go down to the bottom lane and you try and push in that wave, because what always happens when you have Alistar is if you get the advantage in a lane, and you can start pushing it in against the enemy 2v2 lane, Alistar gets in his prime position where he can start tower diving. That's what he does so, so well. So once you have that situation, you just start calling down people and you set up these dives very effectively and there's very low risk because Alistar doesn't really take any damage with his ulti from it. And that's one of the ways Origin likes to play with Miffy on it. And we'll see if they can. To for sure, just a quick update. I believe it's Betsy's mouse slash computer that's being looked at at the moment. And we'll keep you up to date as and when I hear more. But you were talking about the laning phase and talking about pushing those towers. Some of the other stats that we've also looked at is, is Gambit have secured the first tower in the game in six games. Mm -hmm. Origin have done the same in five of theirs. So we'll see whether or not that style of pushing for towers will equate to any sort of control in the match. It is what Gambit really wants to do with their comp here. Again, it's, it's very much about have the double Trinity four spike, have an Italy grouping with a Ari and Corky as well, and you have a lot of poke coming in. You can also do this where you swap for giving to the mid lane. Once the laning phase is over, you put Betsy in the side lane, Kabushad in the opposite side lane, you have a 1 3 1 setup. Safe wave clear from Forgiven in mid, opens up for Ghost of Paper to start roaming on this Tarek here, and suddenly you open up the map. But again, it all comes down to how well can you play that early game. Can you get into a position where you can start creating picks and set up these sieges here with Forgiven? Or are you forced to just get into big 5-on-5 five -five team fights where Vladimir becomes stronger and stronger, where Alistar really shines as well? Well, it's good to see that Forgiven is in good spirits. Big smiles on camera. Goes through as well. We are in a pause, so players aren't allowed to communicate via headsets. And we'll be getting into this game quickly. We did see QA there on stage looking into that technical issue that we're resolving. It's It's... It's really fabulous to see Tarek back into the game. And it's going to be pink Tarek. Just informing people. <laughs> Apparently, uh, Eddie... He didn't do it last time. Play, we had that. that was the problem. That's a big problem. When you it play really Tarek, is. it's pink Tarek. Armor there's, of the there's Fifth nothing Age. Else. Armor of the Fifth Age. As Gambit are looking for their fourth win, if they can find it. Currently trying to fight their way out of the bottom. I want to step away from the match and the picks and bans because something that um, you know, Krapper brought up on PTL and something that we've been talking about coming into this week was how you do have these top three teams mm -hmm. and how we feel Origin is at the bottom of the top three. But there's kind of an opinion that Gambit could near, be near the top of the bottom seven. Right. It has to be proven, of course. But you kind of feel like they could be there and this could be a good game to test how close are they yeah. to Origin and the rest of the top teams. This would really be a test for Gambit. and They still have... It feels like they're just, there's no massive problem. It's a lot of small problems for Gambit they need to fix. One of them can be certain champion picks or champions they don't play. I guess we could even put that as a fairly large problem in this case, but unless they have these counter picks that works for them. Then you start looking at how we talk about the synergy between the jungle support, Diamond and Ghost of Paper here not always being there. How Betsy has been fairly inconsistent in the mid lane. He's had great games and then he has games where he gets destroyed in laning phase and it costs Gambit a lot. Like, it, it's still very relying on Kappa Shot being the main carry. Yeah, and if Diamond can get him ahead as well. If he can, yeah. And that's... It's fairly predictable, obviously. I mean, we saw Origin here. Three bans towards the top lane. Even one we haven't seen Kappa yeah. Shot play. We should assume that's for top lane. And that's what you can do when there are the, these picks you don't have to worry about, and you know it's so much about Kappa Shot. And that makes it difficult for Gambit when, when they play the top teams, or when they play the top teams. Yeah, easy to shut down. So I did see that Betsy has reconnected to the server, guys. Hopefully... We'll be getting back into this game in a moment or two. The crowd is excited after that brief pause. We're loading up now. Origin doing battle with Gambit. The flags are lit up as we load up onto the rift. And you do see Mithy has been soulbound with Niels. I want to have a look. Gosu, is he wearing that armor of the fifth age? He is, and Beautiful. he's looking fabulous. And he's starting boots. This is something Ghost of Pepper did in the spring split in a few games. He wanted to 
basically be better at roaming. Doing the same thing here on Terry. He also wants to make sure he can get in range for that stun onto Nils. So we're just going to see stats on the Callista. Very impressive numbers, obviously, when it comes to KDA, Hunpsin Rin, a raid as well for him. Slacking and kill share. Yeah. Not good enough, buddy. Keep it up, Nils. Not good enough. Obviously, making a small joke. We just see Gosu. Gonna invade. No deep wards just yet. And it looks like we may be getting ourselves into the standard lanes for the moment, at least. Although Mithy and Nils are moving, back, now. moving away. So let's see whether or not they can stick to this. Very defensive start for Origin here. They're trying to show themselves at, at standard start locations, like down the bottom lane, near the Crooks, you have your, your dual lane standing in case Gambit were invading in, placing a few wards to try and spot them. But as we mentioned in the pick and ban phase, nothing really stops Origin from just swapping to top lane. No smite for Kapojar, he's gonna try and do a camp, as we normally see it at level one. And then he's gonna realize that both Mithy and Nils is gonna show themselves top lane. So this should slow down Gambit, a little bit at least, in the start, but we tend to see the 4v0 push. And when you're the ones starting the lane swap, you can often start on the weak side of the map with your jungler and top lane. That's what they're doing here with Amazing, something Origin likes to do. Because Gambit would have to predict the swap and then invade into this red buff to stop him. Otherwise, you just pick it up for yourself and you move over and take your blue buff and then you are already on the top side of the map ready to 4v0. Because there's of course no freeze when you take that camp at level 1 from Origin side. So everybody is involved in the jungle until Niels and Mithy have now shown. They secured Gromp. Gambit are aware they're now in a lane swap scenario for only the second time this split. And let's see how well they handle themselves. We did see Peckett. He also started boots into Betsy's Ari in that mid lane. And Peckett's not been required to carry as far as Arjun are concerned. He's been able to rely on the rest of his team, but you can see with the utility from Soa's top, Pekka will need to get himself into a good yeah. position for this this game. Whenever we go late game and we get to the big team fights, Pekka really steps up. up. Yeah, always. Always have great late game fights for himself. But he's also picking the scaling uh, champions. I mean, Vladimir is not a champion you pick to destroy your laning phase. I mean, you are here to scale up. You are here to try and neutralize the Ari and, and make it a bit of a farm lane in the early game. You obviously don't offer a lot of long range safe wave clear. That is a problem for Origin. It's mainly going to be about Soas here, and he's going to be stuck in the side lane with his teleport to Origin. Can't really afford to fall behind to Fischio. with what Gambit can do. And now, this is a problem for Gambit. They're coming way too late to the top lane. Notice what Origin did here. They skipped the blue buff. This is what H2K has done before as well. They skipped the blue buff, so now the timer Gambit has in their head is like, okay, they're going to do red buff, they're going to do wolf, they're going to do blue, so we know around like 3.40, they're going to be around top side. But when you skip the buff, you're there 20 seconds I've earlier, before, Gambit, and suddenly you zone them away. Gambit, why are you here? We've seen this end so badly in the LCS. Gosu's low, he's being burned down, but he stays alive. He gets the inner turret shield. Because of pink turret, by the way. And it is purely those power pink pants that kept him alive. Origin, however, zoning Gambit away, and they were running out of minions. Forgiven's been left alone in the bottom lane. Yeah, but Forgiven is pushing on his own, so Origin should be able to take down this tower, swap back down to that bot lane as well. This is the whole objective, and it's all about the fact they came up here earlier. Gambit were hoping to move three guys under the tower so Kapuchak could farm and stop the 4 re 0 Tricked by the timer, by the lag of blue buff, tower goes down, and once you're stuck there in that 3v4 between towers, there's not really anything you can do, because you won't be able to fight. And if you start recalling, you will be in the bottom lane way too late as well. But Forgiven, realizing it's tough for him to get that tower. He has to swap back from Origin. Can they stop him from killing the bot lane? Then suddenly you have a tower advantage from Origin. Very smart start. Well, we'll find out if Origin can continue that lead. Uh, decided oh, no, it, wasn't uh, the, it wasn't the pink Tarek, it was the boots. Because the loud goes you to run away quicker. So we'll better. keep an eye on Diamond. Pick it. Should be able to have that Sanguine pull, and he does. Takes a big trade. And he's going to use the last of those biscuits. And we see the duo going up top. So they're not defending bottom, okay. relying on Soaz's glitter lances to do that for them. Yeah, obviously, as, as we mentioned, still have pretty good wave flare from Soaz on his own. But also, this is Origin once again saying, we know it's about Kappa Shot. So by us sending Kalista back to the top lane in a wave that's been bounced, 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 been bounced on the tower, 
and is now pushing back down towards Origin. Kalista can zone away that Hecarim, and Kapushad is trying to find the lane where he can farm. He's going back to the bottom lane now to get that one-on-one, -on -one, but it's really Origin putting full focus on Kapushad. Bans and the way to play the early game here. And we do see, of course, Gambit responding. I'm going to send the duo up. No immediate pressure on those dragons. Origin have got great dragon control this split. They've actually secured 22, the second highest out of any EU team, and only given up 14. We're not going to have a lot of impetus on that right now as we see Diamond maybe looking for a dive. I guess if you combo with Dazzle, there is some damage, but good headbutt pulverize is very yeah. difficult under a tower. We are also very early in the game. Diving 3v2 is going to be very risky for Gambit. Instead, they get the 2v2 lane they were looking for. Kapcha gets his one-on-one -on -one lane in the bottom lane, but Origin has already got that tower advantage, and this is the trade. Stun from Ghost of Pepper, bomb landing here from uh, Forgiven, and that's how you want to trade very quickly. Short trades from him. Kapcha shot will take a lot of poke, but has pretty good all-in. Source will hit level 6, though, and then not really a whole lot is going to happen. Well, Kabushot does have Ignite, so if he does find Soaz running out of consumables, potential for the kill is dead. He's burning through all of his drinks, Look, though, so Kabushot's staying health. They have a ward placed on the blue wall. They see Diamond on the top side instantly. We see Amazing come down to the bottom lane. Again, pressure on Kabushot. Stop his recall. He's low. He's alone. 2v1. Minions are coming in. Another recall stopped. Oh. Kapushad is really in trouble. No flash. Betsy's now coming out and trying to help him, but that's going to cost Betsy now in his own lane. So suddenly, by origin doing this, they keep pulling Gambit around. The question is, is it enough? Yes, you are distracting Kapushad. Yes, you are denying some CS for Betsy. But Cabo is still even with Soaz. Betsy still slightly ahead of Peke. And we'll need to see whether or not Gambit can find the mid-game fights they need. I really like Origin the later this game goes. Once Niels gets his hands on a QSS, that dazzle isn't as dazzling anymore. And we do see Gambit trying to push in this tower. So 61 CS for Forgiven, 55 for Niels on Callista. Cabo was able to back pick up those Merc Treads. And our sort of standard landing phase is playing out. It is, but still that one Tower of Origin. Another trade from Gambit. They don't even care about the Alistar because the damage has already been dealt. Just stunning and Q from Forgiven is already in the air. So not a whole lot maybe they can do to defend Nils in that case or just stop the auto attacks from Forgiven. But these trades will keep happening over and over and over. At least helped even out that trade somewhat, I think, from the D side. Sustain from Tarek, sustain from Alistar. Good for Alistar in this situation, I feel. Just a lot of pressure being put onto Origin's lanes, with the exception of Cabo shot a few minutes ago. Oh, good charm from Betsy. Origin wants to find a chance to push out that top lane and swap Nils and Mithy back to that bottom lane here. Amazing was up there very quickly, showing himself, but they want to see if they can keep finding Cabo shot or at least start setting up where there's a tower, a tier one tower, because then you can start using jungle pressure to set up dives with that Alistar. Gambit, though, I like this play here. Betsy, he's winning the mid lane against the Vladimir pick from, from Expectus. This is what has happened a few times. Amazing, it's gonna go down. Sparrow Rush is up. Not even gonna get needed. Betsy lands the chomp. Diamond goes low. That first blood secured for Diamond Prox. Amazing ghosting. Amazing didn't want that. That's a flash for Hemo play comes out. That might Ray be enough him. to secure the kill. Sanguine Pool is gonna keep Betsy in place. Pekka is going for the kill. Not going to secure it this time around, but the Transfusion Hemo Plague. That's an early kill onto Pekka. And a very important trade for Urgian. First, it was a nice move from Gambit, winning the mid lane. Play around it here. You force Pekka back to base. You come with the mid lane, you start pushing in the tower. Amazing goes down, but then Pekka managed to get a return kill. Stop the push, stop the tower from going down, because Urgian is all about keeping your towers alive here. You want to keep them alive. You want to have a slow laning phase. If the towers start falling, Betsy is suddenly able to start roaming, and that's where things can get really, really lucky for you. So, that kill being secured by Peke is the first time he's got a kill before 10 minutes, all split long. And we'll see if it's going to help Origin maintain some control. We've not seen the lanes resetting yet, despite Niels grabbing that Cutlass. Feel as so as can handle Cabo Shard for the time being. He seems to be winning out in the trades. 
We haven't exactly seen how that played out, but we do see Amashar's going to play himself out. Pick up most likely the home guards, and we can see some dragon stats that we highlighted earlier. The first team to get the five dragon buff was Origin. Mm -hmm. They do have significantly better dragon priority than yet. Let's see what Arjun does now. Mithy hits level six. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Gets interrupted at first. So notice what Arjun is doing here. You mentioned this, how you want to have that Alistar where there's a tier one tower you can use to dive in and then potentially take a dragon after. As soon as Mithy hit level six, instant recalls from Soas, instant recalls from the bot lane. Now to swap it around. So they're going to be on the bottom side here. Kabusha just wants to push in the wave. So just for given top and then you recall if you're Gambit and you just swap around as well. You match it the 2v2. And you keep playing around the fact you have strong lanes. That's why we got to see amazing shine now. Jumping with that Alistar. If you get the push on Gambit's bot lane, there's a dive for you. They can give you a kill. Couple shot. That was going down. Yeah, yep. thinking, this is a problem for Origin, the fact they're losing mid lane. Because now Gambit. suddenly Gambit opens up the map. 20 CS down for Pekka. Keep in mind, he does have a kill, though. However, Gambit, even out the tower score, have the gold lead as we've crested 11 minutes. And now we need to see how Gambit handled himself. Duo lane from Origin down bottom. Kabashad backed and is prancing his way up top. So he can't get tower dove by that Rek'Sai Alistair combo. And we'll see whether or not Forgiven and Gosu can fend off this pressure. So far, Forgiven's farming up well. Niels is opting to go Blade Leader and King first as opposed to Bloodthirster, like we saw earlier in the day. Wants to be able to deal with Kabashad in the one-on-ones we're going to see. Have a bit more self-sustain and peel against him in this case it's gonna cost him a little bit in terms of pure burst damage where the flat ad is great for Callista. but if you get to sit there and land multiple auto attacks the play the drone play the drone king is gonna even up in terms of damage for him yeah and we are in that time period now where origin tend to be a lot more active if we look at some of the numbers they're sort of three 10 minute stats we're not mind-blowingly impressive 10 to 20, they tend to get, if memory says, 47 kills for 17 deaths. Right, see if Origin want to do the same. They've got a Vladimir that wants to scale, but they've got a Callista that's yes. quite powerful. And exactly the thing with the Vladimir who wants to scale is why Origin should have a very hard time taking over the mid game in this game here because Betsy has opened up the mid lane. He can keep pushing it in. And then suddenly there's this roaming threat, but when you sit in the lanes and you hear that you, the enemy mid lane has gone missing and you know he's in your jungle, you have to play passive. You have to walk back to your tower. That stops you now from making aggressive plays. It makes it hard for Amazing to look for a gank because there's always the risk of like four guys from Gambit showing up and counter gank. We need to see if Soros can keep control of Kabushad as well. If he can keep pushing in top lane and force Kabushad to stay in lane and never have that home guard TP, that's a good way to keep him down. Soros obviously will never have the same impact in terms of his teleports. Lulu home guard. I mean, it can work, but it's not as effective. Come on. Not the same Teleport punch. wild growth. Have a giant Alistair in your face. So we do see now some strategic decisions need to be made by both of these squads. Basically even CS across the board. But it's Origin that is playing the rotations and now they've got the pressure on the tower. Yeah, I just want to highlight the play they're making here. We just talked about how Betsy could push down Pekka. So instantly they just send Source in the mid lane because the wave top was pushing anyway. And it gets so much damage with Betsy being back in base. Quick little... Rotation here, not even rotation, just walk straight from base, but <laughs> quick little play from them. Lily caught Gamma a little bit off guard, and now Soros oh, just going to return cheeky. to the top lane as well to pick up the wave and keep defending the towers. So Amazing's Prey Seeker finds its mark. Take a look at Kabushar. How much damage did he get on that top tower? So we can see the minion wave really hit the tower. Amazing's going to get that scuffle crab. A lot of damage put onto Soros' top tower amount of time out of the lane and as we talked about dragon control six games out of eight can Kabusha recall in time to get that home guard because gambit they want to fight and they're going in teleports come in from so that was guard. close diamond prox almost connects with the javelin toss but number seven of nine first dragon secured by origin pekka is going to sanguine pull and flash defensively they're down on the bottom the side though, so look what Gambit is doing here. They're going straight for the mid lane, already pushed out the wave. Betsy, that's why he was slightly delayed and he had no ulti for the fight either. Gambit want to see if they get some damage on the mid tower. At the moment, only Mithy is here to defend. Amazing joining in, but very few minions for Gambit. So, gonna take away a third of the hit points in the mid. 
in a turret. We do see that Gosu and Forgiven are pushing bottom. This tower took all of that beating in the opening few minutes, but is still standing. Here comes the support from Soaz. He's used his teleports already. Hemo played out to Forgiven and Gosu. Soaz is trying to run a target down. Little Lance will connect on both. Hemo Plague has now popped and Tides of Blood splatting across Forgiven's face. He's still got the flash available, holding on to it. Sanguine pulls out. Sanguine pull oh, is not well. going to be enough. The Prey Seeker does though. Amazing, finds the kill. Mithy is looking for the Pulverize. There's the flash away and an uncharacteristic miss. Niels rends Diamond for a kill. Tower may fall shortly as well. In reply, Gambit get one of their own. But net gain to Origin. Yeah, bot lane tower should go down as well. Action everywhere at the moment. Gambit and two guys top to take the tower. It meant they were missing members on the bottom side, and Origin knew that. Walk all the way down. Four guys gets the kill onto Forgiven. The diamond goes down to mid lane. He was holding it on his own. And suddenly Origin responding. The mid game is on for both teams. Now three towers to two for Origin wants to take this one down. So going to have themselves a small gold lead. You can see Morella Nomicon was completed there for Betsy. Peck is sitting on a lot of gold. 2,600, he'll most likely finish off that Wota. Blade of the Rune King and the recurve bow for Niels. Get his hands onto the Hurricane. Strong, strong pickups here across the board. And Cinder Hulk for Amazing versus that Magus for Diamond Prox. If Diamond ever gets caught out, he's in trouble. Fans obviously siding with Origin, number three team here. And I want to see how the team by here are going to play out because one of the reasons for this blade build, as well for Nils, is the fact that Kabushad is the only member who can really 100% dive onto him. Betsy is going to try, like, dash in towards him. But it's going to be difficult through Lulu, Alistar, and so on for himself unless he gets a good flank. But Nils is basically saying, I know Kabushad is going to be the guy every single time there. So I need something that can keep him away from me. Slow him down, speed myself up against the Hecarim. He's always super effective. Goes to Pepper here. Might be caught out. Oh, he has been indeed. The knockup comes up and Niels lands the killing blow. Now Diamond, he gets headbutted back as Mithy has found him and Peke transfuses a kill. Gambit, we were way out of the position in that situation. We keep seeing Soas roam around the map on this Lulu. He's been ganking bot lane, he's been pushing mid lane as well. And every time he's part of something, it's super effective for Origin. Him going to mid lane after pushing top almost gave them a mid tower. Open up for Nils to take it after. Then he walks down bottom lane. They secure a kill on a bot tower. Now he's around the mid lane where Kapushad is pushing top. It is really well played from Soas how he's moving around on Lulu. And he's always trying to go back and catch the wave once it hits the tower and then push it back up with the Lulu, and then he roams away again. Are we keeping our eyes on Amazing for the moment? This is actually the first time he's played Rek'Sai the split. Doing a fantastic job of it. He's been prioritizing that Gragas four games. And then Evelyn Sajwani Nunu. He seems to be in the right place at the right time, and for honestly for all of Origin, he just seems to be making the right decisions. Now, I did say in picks and bands, and I felt the Nidalee was questionable. Amazing even stole away the Gromp, I think that was. And it's one and three for Diamond. He's playing very aggressive. We'll see whether or not this poke, when combined with Corky, can help out. Yeah, because Origin has, has done a good job getting down these outer turrets and, and try and trade them and let gank. Gambit, they're out of position. Oh, Pekka is taking a lot of damage. He has indeed. Sanguine Pool's available, as is that Hemo Plague. And he just runs away. Betsy held under Spirit Rush. He wasn't going to go all in. He's going to go back in now that Diamond is joining. So let's find out. Here comes Diamond. Javelin toss. Holds on to the trigger. Doesn't connect. Hemo Plague at the max range. Pekka actually flashed forward for this one and ghosted. Okay. And does a lot of damage to Diamond, but it's not going to be enough for anything further. And it looks like Gambit should secure that tower. And look what Gambit has done on the map here. Every single lane has been pushed in. Betty waiting in that bush was a super smart move to get control of the minions. Diamond moving down as well. And Origin has no outer turret to trade for at the moment. You have to move further in towards the enemy tier 2 tower. So Gambit is still using the fact they have these strong lanes. And we talked in Champs League about how you can put Forgiven in the mid lane and you turn it into a 1-3-1 setup with Betsy in the bot lane, Capshot in the opposite lane. That's exactly what Gambit just did here. It also opened up for Ghost of Pepper to start roaming and worked out well to give, give Gambit a bot lane tower. The problem is Gambit have this sort of mid-game centric team composition that's down 
as we're in the mid game. 2,000 gold down, despite being even on gold. They're down in kills, they're down a dragon. Looks like Origin may want to set up some position. But let's also be honest, Cabochard now has that Trinity Force and Home Guards, his teleport available. If Origin starts a dragon yeah. in the incorrect way, that's how Cabochard can break back into this game. This really is a strong point for Gambit and where they have to be able to take a fight and win it. It's something that they failed to do against Unicorns a lot last week. They gave away so much of the early, uh, the early objectives. They never really got to fight and then slowly but surely they just lost the game. Yeah, they've been more active in the early game, but it's still Origin in control so far. So Gambit do not contest Dragon number two. They do have some positional space in the middle lane, but I think there's going to be enough wave clear and defensive posturing from Origin. So Gambit unable to gain anything despite giving up that Dragon. Cabo just going to head himself back up to top lane. Notice even on CS and Soas, yes, there was resources to keep them down. But if you're a power pony and it's not in the right position, it doesn't matter. Oh, but this is now the time for Gambit then to reset the whole map and say, okay, there's no dragon. We don't care about that. We need to play around our side lanes, the Ari and the Hecarim, while Forgiven is just not way for you. That's how we can win the game, that's how we can snowball. Both of them back in their lanes pushing in. Origin has to stop pushing now. Every single lane is going to be pushed down. Wow. And Gambit can keep getting pressure. And what they then need to do is if they can hit the tower themselves, they need to start roaming between the lanes because you have such a short route from the top lane to mid lane if you already push down to tier 2 tower and use that to dive on Origin. Create some kills. You have double Trinity Force. Your Ari is insanely fed, honestly, in the mid lane. Insanely fed. Pretty well good. farmed. Let's say well farmed. Pretty good farm, yeah. Against the 201 Vladimir, I think that gold will even out if we compare the direct numbers. But you know, despite the fact Gambit had given up those dragons, it's only dragon number two. I'm trying to make it sound like a doom and gloom. It's actually not that bad yet. But if Gambit, I think, don't find an opportunity in the next 10 minutes, that's when things start to get very scary. Yeah, now we also need to start seeing how Gambit places these wards here. We mentioned how Eddie also oh, goes to Pepper and Diamond. They Plays so many wards. Gambit is the team with the most every single game, or on average at least. Right now, it's very spread out. All over the map, there are some defensive wards in your own jungle. There are very few wards in the jungle of Origin. And that stops you from playing aggressive when you push down to tier 2 towers, because you suddenly don't have the vision. You see, can I roam between the lanes, or do I risk face checking? And you're forced to sit in your lane. But because Origin is running with so little wave clear, every time Gambit is there, they can keep pushing it down, and they have to use it now. I need to see Goes to Paper and Diamond, invest into heavy deep warding of the enemy jungle and start applying pressure on either the Baron or just on the towers through simply roaming between and diving them. The amount of wards that Gambit just placed on the top half of the jungle, putting some pressure on that Baron objective could be a way to force Origin's hand. But, but Origin then, have been so much better at Baron play. Yeah, and then you gotta swap your side lanes around. Capture needs to go to the bottom lane then with the teleport if you wanna start playing around the Baron for themselves, but they're more or less setting up for Kapucha to push his lane and then free move into this jungle here. Let's see if Gambit can do it, because as we've mentioned a few times already, the further we get into the game, the better it is for Origin, and when we start getting these big 5 on 5 team fights, it becomes difficult for Gambit unless they create a pick just in the start of the fight or get a beautiful flank from someone like Kapucha. So both of these teams average around the 26-27 minute mark for those first Barons. Origin, however, for the nine Barons that they've secured, they've only conceded three. So again, it is a testament to the fact that the team was six and two coming into the week. It helps in that regard. But it's Gambit to have control, and Cabo's not gone bottom yet. They're leaving Betsy there to fish up. Yeah, we need to see Goza Paper upgrade his trinket as well. You're going to need it if you keep playing around this vision near the Baron itself. Finds, finds the one ward. Betsy's going to be in trouble. I think he up There's a ghost. ghost. Here comes Soez as well. Betsy's going to get turned into a munchkin. But now Origin has to worry about the Baron. Nils was back in base when this play happened, and look what Gambit is doing instantly. 
rushing it. Only two guys are around it. TP from Source is ready. He has to use it if they want to stop it. And he is. Amazing's coming in with the help of 50. The knockup is on to Ghost. Ghost is trying to run away. Baron has been stopped. Now Cabashot. Oh, no, hold on to that onslaught of shadows. Where does he throw it? Still keeping the trigger. There's no Hemo Plague from Peke, nor is there a Ghost. But Beautiful. Goes in for a two man pulverize. Ghost who purpose on the back line trying to run away. Peke has come in. Sanguine Blade. Amazing is returned from the flank. Diamond gets cut down where he stands. Origin get four kills after killing Betsy Bottom and secure the Baron for themselves. Everything was planned there from Origin, from getting that kill to saying, we know we can stop it. Mithi goes in, pops the ulti on that Alistar and just dances around the members. You have Callista now for the rend as well. So Baron for Origin. They won the mid game. We talked about how it could be difficult because the mids are going down, but some beautiful moves around the map, especially from the likes of Soas. And now here, well, Gambit, you're tanking the Baron. You're still fairly early in the game. Mithy's not going to go down with his ulti, and now the rest of Origin joins. So this, fantastic. Yeah, nothing you can do at this point here. And look, there was the teleport wild growth giant Alistair we talked about 15 minutes ago to Fischio. But it didn't hit anyone. I think it did, but it doesn't matter. It's, right. it's the fact that there's a cowboy Alistair that size on the map. That's what matters. I'm gonna go back and rewatch. Okay, you can you can rewatch and, and we'll see whether it did. Either way, Origin nine kills to one now, five thousand gold up, two dragons up. They've got Baron as well, and they've got the late game scaling on the condition their threats stay alive. I think as long as Vladimir or that Callista are alive, didn't hit anyone. That's what matters. That is what matters, I agree 100%. Forging, they're just going in for another dive. So, Diamond's down. You're falling behind now. Alistar is in his prime position where he can just instantly engage onto you. He doesn't care about your towers. They're gonna push straight in for inhibitor. Betsy though trying to respond himself. Now he's very far away and Origin pushing a lot faster than he is. So, inhibitor turret will get secured. Mythic gets lobbed in by Fate's Call. Pulverize is gonna catch Cabo Shard out and he's dropped. He tried to onslaught away, but does nothing. He's feared into oblivion. The inhibitor will drop this Baron-empowered minions. Being pushed down on that bottom lane. Origin, they're not letting up. They're onto the Nexus turret, so they're challenging the wave clear. Nexus turret number one is down. Origin now gonna slowly back away. So I think Betsy has been out of sight for just long enough to create doubt in Origin's mind. Gambit may be waving the flag of surrender. Unless they can pull off a miracle down all across the map and supers to deal with as well. Yeah, we need to see some great outplays from Gambit if they want to pull the way back into this game here. It's still going to be around these individual performances like Betsy trying to get a kill one on one against maybe Peke, but it's so difficult now against this Vladimir. But later we get into the game as well. I mean, we've already hit the late game, obviously, in Origin, in full control. And we got a highlight as well. Cabochard opted into this Hecarim. It was the last pick. He's not done anything. He's farmed and he's pushed, pushed lanes. The focus was on him, though, from I, Origin in the start of the game with the lane but swap. Look at all, the, look at all the, the warding they had around Baron. This is Gambit I'm talking about. They've not found an opportunity for Cabochard to TP in and get an onslaught right. onto Origin. That's why I feel like this is a, a team effort from Gambit that's failing for them. Yeah. Um, they haven't been able to use the three pushing lanes to create any tower dives, to create any picks. We haven't really seen a very good use of your deep wards. There was a the one time around the Baron itself, but it was, seemed like Origin were, were in control there. They were like, yeah, we're just gonna go gank bot lane because you have no TP there. Uh, well, you are an Ari pushing on your own, I mean. And we know we can go stop the Baron. And that was where it was really the last chance for Gambit to use the mid-game spike for themselves. Mithy reading the situation, Unbreakable Will comes out and fires the Pulverizer tad early. We did see that Ghost Pepper rather forgiven and Betsy gonna be able to get away. As it stands, Gambit just a little bit out of sorts, trying to find a way back into this game. Yeah, you're trying to hope for that. I mean, you know you can't really start split pushing again because Arden can just group up and like pop Talisman and force a fight and then maybe end the game. So you're trying to hope for that one last fantastic team fight 
that's gonna turn the game around for you. Where can Gambit pull it off though? Top lane tower is the last outer turret. For Origin here, you can see both Diamond and Ghost of Paper trying to ward up their own jungle to maybe hide in there. See if they can create a trap for Origin. But you need Capo Shot and Betsy to just destroy Nils in the start of the fight. Remove a lot of the damage. Problem is obviously also there. Vladimir is going to be super annoying at this point. Well, we'll find out whether or not Pekka can control the rest of the game. It's 4-0 and 3. Nearly 300 CS. Yeah, now Origin, obviously. Up in the top lane, pushing in. We mentioned here how now Gambit might have the chance at going in. So we'll find out. Gosu Pepper is down. We do see there's Mithy with the headbutt pulverize combo. Betsy spur rushing away with Xpeke out. Can Niels clean up? And the simple answer is yes. He's got himself a double kill as they turn their attention onto Cabo Shot. The Onslaught of Shadows is there just to keep Cabo Shot alive. The exhaust will hold him in place as Niels will get himself a triple. Origin will get their eighth tower and they set their sights on the inhibitor. Gambit had to try this point here. They were waiting. Trying to see if they can get the jump. They got Pekka down, but that's about it. Origin still so far ahead of Gambit in this game here, and they're looking to finish everything. Look how short those death timers are. 10 seconds left before Forgiven is up. Origin gonna play this one a little bit safe and secure another inhibitor turret. Gambit moving their way up. Now we're not gonna go down just yet. Minions are pouring in. With Baron up in a minute, Origin gonna have the pick of the letter for objectives to close this one out and they get the 10th tower down. League of Legends by the numbers. Every single thing that stands between Origin and the Nexus has been taken. Well, Amazing might be in a little bit of trouble. Diamond is gonna pounce forward. Amazing's gonna interrupt with the knock up. Look at Soez's position. I don't know if he's gonna be able to catch up. Amazing's gonna tunnel through the wall. And we're going on the great chase. Betsy even spur oh, rushing for this one. Oh. An amazing, with incredible escape. Gets out alive here. Damn it, if they had killed him, could maybe have gone over for a Baron. Try for that one, but for now Origin is just gonna wait it out. Now you have so many options. I mean, do you want to take a Baron? Do you just want to go straight in? And this is what Origin did last week as well. When they have a very strong lead, they Play the safe close. They did. Um, get the objectives, get the aspect of the dragon and the baron, and then look to finish the game out. And that's a smart call, especially when you've got such a big Vladimir Callista. Force Gambit to come to you with her 10,000 gold deficit. Just pop them. Lead around. Set a trip. Don't want to risk a potential smite deal, even though you have to kill this man. And here's the fight. Well, Ghost, gets caught up by Fate's call, and he's down. Niels goes legendary with that rend. Five versus four. It's not done yet. Mithy used Righteous and the coin to engage, and Amazing is just zoning them away. Look at those rend stacks climbing up 15, 16. Diamond's going to need a miracle smite steal to make this work. Mithy. He's gonna throw down a breakable will. Up to 30 stacks, we see Diamond is down. Amazing gets the kill, and Baron, number two, secured by Origin. Officio, to go back to our pre-game discussion, Origin, clearly the third best team. Gambit, have a lot to prove if they wanna break into the top three. Focus for them at the moment is clearly just still on improving as much as possible every week. We have to remember Gambit started 0-4. Week one and week two, where they couldn't practice properly. Then they got a lot better week three. But there's still a gap in Europe up to these top three teams. That goes for everyone, not just Gambit. We've seen when Unicorns play the likes of Origin, they play H2K and so on. There's also this gap here. So it's clearly just the top three, and then everyone else fighting to make these playoffs here. Four, five, and six, of course. Origin gonna get down this inhibitor and let's see if they want to go for another one. Well, it does look like they want the fight. Diamond Prox has got caught out a little bit. There's no unbreakable will for Mithy as we see transfusions being thrown out from Peke. Emo Plague is on cooldown, but there's only one Nexus turret to get through. And there's still an inhibitor standing. I retract the statement. There is no inhibitor standing. Niels is hammering away with that bloodthirster shield and the shield from Lulu. Peke holds on to 
his Sanguine Blade. Wild Growth comes out to keep Niels alive. Diamond hops in, and he just gets dropped. Onslaught of Shadows is there to kill Miffy, but that's not going to be enough. So as Niels, all of Origin moving forward. They want to go for the Fountain Dive, going to prevent it this time round. Nexus is the focus, and at 35 minutes, Origin clearly hold on to third. Definitely had a plan from the start to how to play against Gambit here. We saw a very clear focus on Kapushad in the early game. The lane stop at first denied a lot of farming that Casey. Then they kept Nielsen in the top lane to try and deny Kapushad even more, force him to go to the bottom lane. Suddenly Mason showed up, a lot of focus there on shutting him down. Also the pick and ban phase. And once again, we see Gambit give up so many power picks to the other team. Alistar, Kalista, Rek'Sai for Origin here, and I thought it looked a little bit uh, difficult for them in the mid game when the mid tower went down because Betsy won that lane against Peck. I was like, well, this might open it up for Gambit now to really start roaming around. But then suddenly Soas on his Lulu is just everywhere. Push out his lane, then suddenly his ganking bot lane, and that gave so many kills to Origin and made them able to respond in the mid game and even out the goal. And just to highlight something really quickly, Cabo Shots Hecarim dealt 5,700 damage to champions that game. 5-7. Mithy's Alistair dealt 5,100 damage to champions that game. Mithy on Alistair was way in the front. And this is what I want to go back to and talk about, is how Gambit is a team, they had vision, they had control points, they were pushing lanes, but they didn't find a way to use the resource that was Cabo Shot. I feel like they did 80% of that correct, but they were missing the last 20%. The wards were not in the 100% right place, the lanes were not pushed at the same time, and that's what basically stopped them from ever really pushing that advantage. Yeah. And also just again, Origin managed to respond so well, and they were ahead in gold from like 15 minutes. It wasn't massive though. It, it was obviously Close. a small lead, yeah. but it was enough with a scaling comp, it obviously means a lot more when you are just even in the mid game. And that's where it just became so hard for, for Gambit so to, to create anything. How do we evaluate Gambit's strength then? Because we said against, against Origin, against H2K, against Fnatic, this is where we show the true colors, right? The, the real challenges. If Gambit are about 80% of the way there, how much do they need to change? Uh, we'll have to get back to that question a little later because we're going to hit to Pulse on stage for a word with 